latest sustainability report. Let me set the scene by giving a few facts about the palm oil industry. This sector has helped to lift the rural populations of tropical developing countries like Indonesia and Malaysia out of poverty. A farmer growing palm oil can earn at least seven times more than if he were growing subsistence crops. In fact, palm oil revenues continue to outstrip revenues from other crops, including rubber and cocoa. Last year, Indonesia generated 23 billion US dollars in palm oil exports, and the sector provides employment for around 16 million people directly and indirectly in the country. In terms of environmental footprint, we can see in the chart that while palm oil is the most productive vegetable oil crop in the world, it also takes up less fertilizer and pesticide in order to produce those high yields. This is why, as the world heats the UN calls to focus on sustainable, inclusive economic growth, we believe that responsibly grown palm oil can be termed a UN Sustainable Development Goal commodity, with its ability to eliminate poverty, provide jobs and reduce inequalities. GAR is an integrated palm oil plantation company listed on the SGX since 1999. In 2016, we had a total revenue of more than 7.5 billion US dollars. GAR currently has around 500,000 hectares of plantation area. Harvested fresh fruit bunches are processed in GAR owned mills, which are strategically located near the plantations to produce crude palm oil and palm kernel. GAR owned 46 mills as at end 2017, which produced over 2.7 million tons of CPO and PK. Our main markets are in Asia, with India, Indonesia and China our major markets. These maps show the location of our upstream and downstream operations in Indonesia. We believe that economic growth can go hand in hand with environmental protection, and we've been putting this into practice on the ground for many years. Here are some of our milestones in the journey towards responsible palm oil. We were the first Indonesian palm oil grower to adopt a zero burning policy in 1997. We adopted a no development on peak policy in 2010. Together, these two practices are key to preventing forest fires and haze on our concessions. In 2011, we were the first in the industry to adopt a forest conservation policy, leading the way for the rest of the sector. In that year, GAR also joined the RSPO. Our subsidiary, SMART, had already joined in 2005. As part of our holistic approach to responsible palm, we complemented our FCP with policies on social and community engagement and yield improvement. We also worked with stakeholders like Greenpeace and TFT to evolve new standards in forest conservation with the high carbon stock approach. In 2014, as our downstream business started to take off, we extended our policy scope to cover the entire value chain. One of the results of this was the achievement of 100% traceability to the mill in 2015. That same year, we integrated all our policies into one master document called the GAR Social and Environmental Policy, or GSEP. Our latest milestones include the achievement of 100% traceability to the plantation for GAR-owned mills and a breakthrough in yield improvement through non-GMO clonal seeds. To ensure we are aligned with changing stakeholder concerns and priorities, we carried out an in-depth assessment of our material issues in 2017. The consultancy Corporate Citizenship conducted the assessment for us based on one-to-one -one interviews with external and internal stakeholders, e-surveys to hundreds of stakeholders, desk research and validation with GAR's senior management. Our updated materiality matrix shows that while the top issues remain similar to previous years, we are seeing the growing importance of labour and other social issues, such as inclusion and gender.
The assessment will inform our sustainability strategy moving forward. The SR 2017 reports on our most material issues. The GAR Social and Environmental Policy, or GSEP, acts as our roadmap to responsible palm production. Our sustainability report tracks our progress against the commitments in the GSEP in the areas of environmental management, social and community engagement, work environment and industrial relations, and marketplace and supply chain. These are also aligned with our most material issues. We commissioned Rainforest Alliance to carry out an assessment of our GSEP implementation in 2017. Their key findings are that we have a series of policies and procedures and are implementing them, including working closely with communities to control fires and carrying out conservation. We have also been carrying out effective traceability processes. Rainforest Alliance also made some recommendations for improvement we have devised an action plan to address those areas. The report and action plan can be viewed on the GAR website. The SR 2017 covers our operations in Indonesia, which provides the bulk of our earnings and is where all our plantations and downstream operations are based. We publish our sustainability report annually in accordance with SGX rules and our report is based on Global Reporting Initiative Standards core option. The calculation of our GHG emissions for our subsidiary in Indonesia has been independently verified by EY since 2015. We've also commissioned other independent external parties to verify our GSEP implementation and labor practices. The SR also tracks our progress on UN SDGs, as you can see, in the table in front of you. All our sustainability reports can be found online. We maintain a dedicated microsite which serves as our sustainability dashboard. It is freely accessible to the public and does not require a separate login. On it, you will find the latest sustainability stats, including fire incident reports, updated grievance lists, and the latest traceability information. In addition to our sustainability reporting, GAR also takes part in other disclosures, such as environmental, social and governance, or ESG assessments for the Dow Jones Sustainability Index, CDP, FTSE for Good, Sustainalytics and SPOT, the Sustainable Palm Oil Transparency Toolkit. We're happy to report that we debuted on the DJSI in 2017, the only palm oil company to be in the DJSI Asia Pacific Index. And we've just received news that we've also become a member of the FTSE for Good Index series. Our inclusion in these indices is dependent on rigorous annual assessment of our ESG practices and indicates that we are meeting globally recognized ESG standards and managing our environmental and social risks. One of the targets we had set for ourselves was the achievement of 100% traceability to the plantation or TTP for GAR owned mills by end 2017. We're happy to report that this has been met. This means that 39% of our palm supply chain is now fully traceable. We are now helping our third-party suppliers achieve TTP by end 2020. The mapping process has increased our awareness and knowledge of our suppliers all the way to the origin and allows us to guarantee the provenance of our raw materials. More importantly, the process has allowed us to deepen engagement and build trust with our suppliers. This is what will help us transform the palm supply chain and help it adopt ever more responsible practices. To do this, we are carrying out a program of targeted site visits, monitoring and assessing our suppliers, helping them close gaps and devising remedial action plans where needed. We organize Smart Seed workshops annually based on practical themes to help our suppliers, such as how to achieve certification and how to improve labor practices and implement traceability.
Where there is an urgent concern, we also organize special workshops, such as the 2017 workshop on the protected Le Sur ecosystem in Aceh for suppliers operating there. We did this to heighten their awareness of the significance of the protected area and how to strengthen procurement practices to ensure they are not sourcing from growers operating in the protected area. You can see the case studies of our supplier response to this engagement, as well as the many actions we have taken with our suppliers in addressing grievances listed on our sustainability dashboard. This diagram gives you an idea of how vast and complex the palm supply chain is, especially as we go further upstream. Our mapping of our own mills revealed that we were sourcing from over 70 brokers who in turn sourced from some 11,000 independent smallholders managing over 40,000 hectares of estates. Our commitment to traceability and transparency throughout our supply chain is important to meet a growing demand on the part of our customers for certified sustainable palm oil. We continue to progress with our certifications under RSPO, ISBO and ISCC and these details are updated regularly on the GAR website. In line with UN SDG 15, the protection of life on land, we continue to maintain 72,000 hectares of conservation area, which is about the size of Singapore across our concessions. This is one of the ways that we help avoid emissions by storing carbon in the undeveloped conservation forests. Recent research also indicates that forest conservation helps to maintain fresh water resources. To support our conservation goals, we continue to work with villages on community conservation partnerships. Currently, around 13 villages have signed on to protect over 7,000 hectares of high carbon stock forests. We have launched integrated ecological farming or organic vegetable farming for these communities. Using spare community land, they are able to grow vegetables and spices for their daily needs. A family participating in this scheme can save up to 300,000 Indonesian rupiah and earn another 500,000 rupiah a month through sales of the surplus. We're also very excited about our breakthrough in yield improvement. Two non-GMO clonal seeds were officially launched in 2017, potentially capable of producing 10 tonnes of CPO per hectare per year. That's an increase of around 30% from current average yields and is set to revolutionize productivity. We are targeting replanting with these new seeds from 2022. We believe that yield improvement is the key to successfully feeding the growing world population sustainably and it could help reduce the pressure to open more forests for agriculture. This focus on yield improvement puts us on track to help deliver the goals of UN SDG 2, which aims for zero hunger. On other environmental management fronts, we're happy to report the achievement of another target that was to release 100 orangutans back to the wild in our multi-year partnership with the non-profit Orangutan Foundation International. We are looking to continue this important work with them. We continue to manage our operational footprint through the reduction of GHG emissions via methane capture and the 100% recycling and reusing of CPO production waste. We also reduce a further 13% packaging in 2017. Our collaborative fire-free programs with villages situated near our concessions have yielded results and we are expanding the program to 15 more villages. The fire-free program, or Desa Matmo Paduli, has resulted in a drop in hotspots and fire spots since it was launched in 2016. However, we continue to maintain our vigilance against fire and we monitor fires closely, reporting all fire incidents in weekly updates on the sustainability dashboard. While we tackle the avoidance of GHG emissions through forest conservation, we are also working on an overall GHG re emission reduction strategy for our operations. We aim to have such a strategy in place by the end of 2018. 
In the meantime, our methane capture facilities at several of our mills have been effective in bringing down emissions with an average reduction of about 49%. All of our 172 estates have social and community programs. As the largest palm oil grower in Indonesia, we have the opportunity to help better the lives of tens of thousands of people living in rural, remote areas. Our support to the community includes various community investments, such as public infrastructure and the provision of education and health care. We also run annual programs such as health awareness, nutrition and vaccination programs. In addition, we continue to contribute to scholarships, helping a new generation of students achieve their higher education goals. The palm oil industry is a powerful job creator, especially in rural remote areas. Through the creation of over 173,000 jobs across Indonesia, we are helping to raise incomes and standards of living. GAR continues to pay above the minimum wage set by the Indonesian authorities. We have strict policies against child and forced labour. We also ask Business for Social Responsibility to carry out an assessment of our labour practices. And based on their recommendations, we have put together an action plan for further improvement. Our breakthrough in yield improvement is the result of our long-held belief in R&D and technology to help us produce palm oil sustainably. Aside from working on new, improved strains of palm oil, Smart Research Institute, or Smart Re, also investigates and explores other areas of practical importance. These include developing climate change resilient plants, improving agricultural practices, and constantly finding ways to minimize our use of herbicides and pesticides through integrated pest management. Amongst its new projects, SmartRe is currently collaborating with Cambridge University on restoring riparian zones, an important component of conservation. Meanwhile, our downstream R&D continues to work on safeguarding consumer health by reducing trans fats in consumer products, as well as finding further ways to minimize co-contaminants. With this, we come to the end of the presentation. If you have any questions or feedback, please feel free to contact me at the email on this slide. Thank you very much for joining us for this presentation.